This video is entitled Spanning Columns, Gaps, and Rows, and is also all about the CSS grid. It's a companion to Chapter 9 of the book So You Want to Learn to Use HTML and CSS by James M. Renault, Ph.D. I'm Dr. Renault, and I'll be taking you through this presentation. In the prior presentation, I showed you how to use the uh, CSS grid in its simple form. We're going to show in this presentation how to span multiple columns of a grid with a single element, how to make a single element span multiple columns. We're going to add spacing between the grid cells, and we're going to set up rows like we set up columns if you want to. So to define rows, well, to define columns, we use the grid template dash columns, but to define rows, we use grid template rows. Kind of makes sense. We put all of the dimensions with a space between each one of the dimensions, and it kind of follows the same rules. Um, there are a lot of, of really complex things that you can do with this. For instance, options for repeating and minimum size and maximum size. Please contact the documentation online for that. That's kind of beyond the scope of this brief introduction. We can also add the style grid-gap to our element that's display grid, and it will define how much of a gap to put. And we can define one gap, which would be the row gap. And if we define two gaps, it would be the row gap followed by the column gap. So if you want a little space um, between your rows, you can define grid gap and, and one dimension, usually pixels or or EMs or something, something small. Um, and then if you wanted two gaps, a gap between the rows and a different gap between the columns, you can define that with grid gap using two dimensions. The last new bit of style I wanted to show was the grid dash column um, style that can be added again to an element that's display grid. And it's kind of shorthand for grid column start and grid column end, but I just wanted to show you the grid column because it's just easier to use sometimes. Um, columns start with a count of one. So the first column is column one. The second column is column two. You can count the columns. Um, and what you do is you say grid dash column start slash end. Now you would put this on a child within a display grid. Um, and basically, one slash three says uh, combine columns one and two and stop combining at column three. So you've got to, it's, it's a little odd that you would say one slash three to combine columns one and two, or two slash five would combine columns two, three, and four. So it's the first column to start combining and the first column to not combine. So that's what the two numbers with the slash between it in the grid column start and end um, style is all about. So here I've, uh, I've defined the header to be a display grid. I've defined the grid template rows to be 3EM and 5EM. So it'll be a two row grid with 3EM and 5EM in the header HTML element. And I've added a 10 pixel grid gap between the two rows. Also then notice that um, I've defined the header nav as a, uh, as a grid of three columns. So the header nav in this example is a grid template with columns and they're defined as one fraction, one fraction, one fraction. So you can see that it goes with two. And then I have an element with an ID of last anchor, but its grid column is two slash four. So it's going to span column two and three on whatever row it happens to be on. It's going to span columns two and three on, what again, whatever row it's on. So let's take a look at the HTML that goes along with this. So we can see that the header up above is uh, has the border of green again, and we can see that it's two rows. It's a row that's 3 EM, and it's a row that's 5 EM tall. So the header is all of that stuff up at the top. 
Um, so it, it did the rows correctly. It added the grid gap of 10 pixels just the way we wanted it. And then you can see that in the columns, because we only had five columns of data, we only have five tags, it, uh, it spread it across the three columns because we defined three columns in the nav. So column one, two, three, and then column one. And then look at this last one. This last one has the ID of last anchor. So it spans column two and three. So you can see there how that one spans two columns where all the rest of them only take up one column. If I hadn't done that, that fifth, that sixth column, that third column on the second row would, would be blank. It would just have nothing in it because um, nothing would span over to it. So by using the call span, I kind of forced it to span over and fill up that space. That concludes the second presentation on the CSS grid. This presentation is copyright 2020 by James Imbrano, PhD. This work is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial share like 4.0 international license. And if you find any errors or have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me at jim at Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in another video presentation soon.